Welcome to Bible Track Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracks, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracks will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Hello, my friend. Welcome to the broadcast today. Thanks so very, very much for joining us. Uh, Particularly, I say welcome if this happens to be the very first time you're tuning in to this particular broadcast. My Bible is sitting open as it always is as we meet together around the radio. I'm in Titus chapter 3. We are teaching our way through the book of Titus verse by verse, trying to give a very clear, usable outline so that you can come back and not only make sense of it later, Later on, but also perhaps even teach it to somebody else. So Titus 3, in a moment I'll begin to read at verse 3. I've got a gospel tract in my hand, and my desire today is not only to make the Word of God clear, but also to develop in you a desire to be a partner with us in getting the gospel out using the tools called a gospel tract. And just in case you don't know what that is, I'll explain here in just a moment. But get a Bible open to Titus 3, get something on which to jot some notes. But let me lead into the Bible study time this way. Not long ago, I was reading a devotional journal, and part of the entry talked about a couple who was traveling across the country of Canada by car. And as they came to the top of a particular hill, there was this sign. The sign read this, water shed line. The sign went on to say this, all the waters falling south of here flow to the Atlantic Ocean. All the waters falling north of here flow to the Arctic Ocean. Well, the couple was sitting there in their car reading this sign and they were sitting right on the dividing line. This was the point uh, in the geographic landscape that made all the difference as to the final destination of the rain that fell in that area. Well, the devotional went on to say that accepting or rejecting Jesus Christ as Savior is a watershed line spiritually in our lives. Where you stand spiritually in relationship to Jesus Christ determines your final destination for all eternity. The passage here in Titus today rather boldly, boldly lays out the spiritual geography that describes all of us without Christ. We're going to see today as we read that you and I are either standing in verse 3 or standing in verse 5. As we get done, we got to ask the question, where in the world am I standing? So get your Bible out, Titus 3, get something on which you can jot some notes. I mentioned gospel tracts a moment ago. That word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. I'm referring to a short written presentation of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's a gospel tool, an evangelism tool that extends our ability to tell the gospel to a lot more people, more people than we could have the opportunity to sit down and one-on-one tell the gospel. I still think the best gospel tract is you and I knowing Christ, living godly lives, looking a friend or somebody we meet eyeball to eyeball and telling them of the great love and mercy of God. And despite the sinfulness of the person we're talking to, that God stands ready to cleanse them from all unrighteousness and give them eternal life and call them his child all because of Christ's death, burial, and resurrection. That's what gospel tracts do. They help us tell that message. The one in my hand right now is a credit card size track called Charge It? We all know what a credit card does. It allows you to have things by charging it to an account. Well, Christ died on the cross so we might have our sins charged to his account, and from his account, he gives to us everlasting life. He gives to us cleansing from sin. And on the back of this simple, small gospel tract are the, is a gospel presentation, clear snippets from Bible verses that explain the gospel. It's a great tool, great tool for tipping when you're out in the restaurant, by the way. Now, listen, friend, 
We have been publishing gospel tracts like this for 80 years. Our mission statement says, taking the word of God to all the world, 80 years and counting. I want to give you a sample packet containing one each of all of our English gospel tracts, but to do that, you need to give me your name and mailing address. My announcer will give to you contact information at the end of the broadcast, but you can just go to our website, which is BibleTracksInc.org. Or go there and you can ask for the sample packet. We'll be glad to send you that packet free of charge. If your Bible's open there, come with me to Titus 3. Beginning at verse 3, here's what the Bible says. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving diverse lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. But after that, the kindness and love of God, our Savior towards man appeared, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us. Stop, please, right there with the middle of verse five. Now, my outline for Titus chapter three has five parts to it. Verses three through seven is part number two. This section I give this title, Our Converted Life. Our converted life, and these verses are here for a reason. Now, in verses one and two, the Bible calls on believers to live their lives around their society and culture in a way that is very much diametrically opposed to virtually everybody else. The reason for calling us to do this is a very singular reason. We have been born again, or as verse 5 puts it, we have been regenerated. Now, you know what a generator does. If the power at your house goes out and you have a generator, you can turn that puppy on and you can bring power back to your house. You bring electric life back to your house. A spiritual regeneration is the work of God whereby he puts eternal spiritual life into the lives of spiritually pe- dead people. Verse 3 is not a very pretty verse on how and how it describes lost people. Now, remember, please remember, verse 3 is not giving us how we saw ourselves before salvation. It describes how God sees us before Christ becomes our Savior. If you're listening right now without Jesus Christ as your Savior, then, well, verse 3 is you. You have rejected, uh, you may reject its description. You have the right to reject their description if you want, but you're rejecting the truth, the truth of God found in his word. God says, if you do not know Christ as Savior, your heart and life without Christ possesses six things. Here we go, all six of them right now. Number one, you are foolish. That means you're spiritually without sense. You lack godly wisdom. You lack God's perspective. This very word was used by Jesus himself over in Luke chapter 24 when he was walking on the road with two people there, the road of Emmaus. In light of all that had transpired surrounding Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, these two people would not believe that Jesus was alive from the dead. And Jesus turns to them and he calls them fools. Anyone who will not accept Jesus Christ for who he is and what he's done and then receive him as Savior is described here by Almighty God as foolish. That's what God says. Number two. The verse 3 says, you are disobedient. Put bluntly, you are unwilling to be persuaded. You are stubborn in your heart towards Christ, You're towards Christ and the truth of the scriptures. Number 3, verse 3 says, you are deceived. You are exactly what you know the word deceived means. You are allowing yourself to be turned away from things that are true, and rather you've been chosen to believe lies, lies about your sinful condition, lies about Jesus' cross death, and lies about your eternal destination. The fourth thing verse 3 says is that you are serving diverse or various kinds of lusts and pleasures. What I am about ready to say, I mean with great tenderness, but I wish I could look you just straight on eyeball to eyeball and say this to you. 
Put in the clearest terms I know how, these words describe here that you are morally depraved. You are morally depraved. You have standards of right and wrong, but your standards are miles and miles away from God's standards. You allow yourself to think, you allow yourself to speak and act in ways that reveal how polluted you are in your soul. Not because you are different than everybody else, but because you don't measure to the standards of God. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That's what God says. The fifth thing we're told here is that you're living in malice. You may not want to harm anybody and everybody, but in your heart you harbor malice towards some and you just wish that they would, well, we call it this, you wish that they would get theirs. You wish that they would get what they deserve. Oh, my friend, It's because of God's grace and mercy towards you and me that we have not gotten what we deserve. Frankly, none of us have. But one day, all will get what they've earned and deserved unless, unless they receive the gracious gift of God. The gift is not an act so much as it is the person. God sent his son and he acted on our behalf and he offers the consequences of his act to us as a gift. Verse three ends with these things. It says, lost people are envious, hateful, and hating one another. This is why, beloved, the prophet Jeremiah wrote about the human heart. He said these words, the heart is deceitful, above all things, and desperately wicked, who can know it? The idea here, you cannot know, I cannot know how utterly wicked our hearts are at its depth. I have not yet met a person who fully acted on the total depraved manner of their heart. They've never gone to the full depths of their depravity. We've read about people, mass murderers and people, serial killers and so on, and perhaps they're getting to the depth of their depravity, but I don't know that uh, I've met anybody who fully acts to the depth of their depravity, but the Bible says our hearts are deceitful above all that we can know. We can't understand how sinful our heart is. Now, you may say, Pastor Mark, uh, those words don't describe me. They're, they're not about me. All right. Well, let me ask you this. If these words did describe you, and uh, then would you understand, would you see, if these did describe you, would you see that you would be then in desperate need of a Savior from sin? I think you would say, yes, so then, friend, do this. Get alone with God. Ask him with great honesty. Ask him to reveal to you if these things really are about you, if these things really do describe you. Don't dismiss the exercise out of hand. If you're not a Christ follower, then go ask Christ to expose to you the real you. And if you find out that he does, and this is you, then run to Christ, run to the cross and be saved from your sin. Do it immediately. Don't wait. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.